songs that I'm going to share with you in this video clip have a couple things going on. They're going to take you back to the first step in factoring, which is don't forget there might be a greatest common factor you have to get out first. Um, there, the second problem I'm going to share with you is going to have multiple letters. It's not just going to have x squared and x and a constant. Um, and sometimes the problems are given to you where they're not in descending order of the exponent. Look at this problem. 8x squared, then a constant of a minus 16, and then a minus 28x. So would you always please first rearrange this problem and put the minus 28x um, in the middle and then the constant. So my degree here is 2, so I have my x squared term, then my x term, and then my constant. Again, broken records got to go off, and you got to look at this and say, oh, those are all even numbers. There's something that come out, can come out of each one of those. Matter of fact, there's a 4 that can come out of each one of those. Whatever you do, don't try to do more than one thing at a time. Just get the 4 out. So I need a 2x squared here, because 4 times 2x squared is 8x squared. I need a minus 7x here, and then 4 times a minus 4 is that minus 16. And then I go, oh, this is a trinomial. And it's got a coefficient in front of the x squared term that's not a 1. So I better find two numbers whose product is a negative 8. And they have to add or sum up to be a negative 7. And that one's pretty easy. That's going to be 1 and 7 most likely. Looks like it's going to be a positive 1. I'm sorry, 1 and 8 positive 1 and a negative 8, they multiply to be a negative 8, and they add to be a negative 7. So, you know, again, I'm inclined to replace this minus 7x with the minus 8 first and then the 1x second. Those two do add to be a minus 7x. This will illustrate um, one other scenario that I may not have shared with you yet as well. But let's go ahead and finish this off. So I'm going to group my first two terms and group my last two terms. The first group has a common factor of a 2x in it. So I'm going to take out that 2x, and then I'll need an x minus 4. So that if I check this, I get these two terms. There is not, if you will, a common factor in each one of those. So when nothing other than 1 comes out of those, would you please exaggerate and show that you're going to factor out a 1, and then you still have this 1 times x minus 4 is this x minus 4. But lo and behold, those binomials match, and so I'm going to write down that common binomial factor that I'm pulling out, and then this 2x plus 1 goes in its own set of parentheses. And whatever you do, don't forget that way back when you pulled out a 4 out of this original problem, and this is the complete factored form for this original trinomial. Let's now look at one that has p's and q's and p's and q's and q squareds. So let's take a look at that. It could have x's and xy's, and, um, but I've chosen to do one with p's, the letter p. p squared plus 7pq minus 12q squared. I think you think of this problem as a trinomial with a number other than 1 in front of the squared term, and kind of ignore this p and q and this q squared for a moment, and still use the process that I was talking about. So I'm looking for two numbers whose product is a negative 120. Product is a negative 120. And I want those two numbers to add to be a positive 7. Hmm, that's going to be quite a list, and that's a kind of an insurmountable task for many of us. So again, would you just start with 1, go to 2, go to 3, go to 4, go to 5. I want these numbers to be different signs. 1 is positive, 1 is negative. I want these numbers um, to add to be a positive number. So of these two values, I'm going to make the big one positive so that they would add to be a positive number. Now that's going to add to be 119, so that's not my, my value. And so next, I'm going to say to myself, does 2 go into 120? And it does, 60 times. And I'm going to ask myself, does 3 go into 120? And it does, 40 times. 
And I'm going to ask myself, does 4 go into 120? Um, you know, if the last two digits are divisible by 4, then the number is divisible by 4. Um, it goes into there 30 times. I don't know if I've found my number yet. I don't think I have. I'm going to ask myself, now I get my calculator out if I can't do this in my head, and I say 120 divided by 5, and that's equal to 24. And then I take 120 with my calculator if I need to, and I divide it by 6, and that value is 20. Um, because this number is divisible by 2 and 3, then it will always be divisible by 6 as well. Boy, I don't think I'm there yet. Oh, I gotta go to seven doesn't go in, but eight goes into 120, and it goes into there 15 times. Hope I'm, you're still seeing this. I think you are on the video. Those two numbers add to be seven. So I'm gonna replace this middle term, the positive seven pq, with a minus eight pq and a positive 15 pq. That adds to be 7pq. So this method still works. I'm going to bring down the 12q squared, and I'm going to bring down the 10p squared. Just so that we don't have to look at this um, while we're working, I'm going to go ahead and, and get rid of this. Hopefully you've got it written down, or you can retract, go back on the video. And then let's go ahead and group the first two and group the last two. And so right here, I have a common factor of 2, and I can get a p out of both of these. So 2p can come out of each of these. So I have a 5p minus 4q. And I always pause this check and make sure I did that right. So this is 10p squared, and that product is a minus 8pq. Good, I did all right. And then I'm going to look at those. A 3 looks like it comes out of each of those. And it looks like a Q comes out of each of those. So I'm going to factor out a 3Q. And when I do, I'm going to need a 5P right here because 3Q times 5P is 15PQ. I'm going to peek over here. Oh, good. That's looking good. And then I'm going to need a minus 4Q here because 3Q times a minus 4Q is a minus 12Q squared. And I'm, again, going to peek here and say, oh, yay, those match. And so I'm going to put them in one binomial. And then this 2p plus 3q goes in the other binomial and guarantee this works, although you should fa um, uh, foil it and check it out to see if you get the original problem. This is going to conclude my um, segment of videos on factoring trinomials where the coefficient in front of the x squared term is not a 1. I, I do want to remind you before we, we finish this particular one, if I did have, so again, we've been focusing on trinomials. If I did have a trinomial, like, uh, let's go with x squared plus 7x plus 10, there's a 1 in front of the x squared term, and we have previously said, let's just look for two numbers whose product is 10, that value, and whose sum is the 7. And those two numbers are 5 times 2. And we have just said then, because this is an x squared term, I put an x in the front of each of these, and I put the 5 in one of the spots, and 2 in one of the spots, and this 5x, and that 2x will give me the 7x, and the 5 times 2 is the 10. But all I want you to know is the AC method would work for this. So it would work for all trinomials, but boy, what a headache it would be to use this. You know, to put this one here and say, let's find two numbers whose product is a times c, which is 10, and adds to be 7. And then to go through all that work of making this a 5x and a 2x, and bringing down the 10, and bringing down the x squared term, and grouping it, and getting out the, the common factors of x, and 2, and then saying, oh yeah, those are the same, and x plus 2 goes in its own binomial, when I could have just stuck the 5 and the 2 right away because the coefficient was a 1. So make things easy on yourself if you can, but if you can't, use the AC method all the time.